Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the next question, which again is another completing the square. Solve this by completing the square. This is a quadratic equation. So remember, when you're completing the square, the first step is to get all of the x's on the left side of the equation and leave the constants on the right, or make sure they're there. So my first readjustment here is going to be to write this as x squared minus 10x is equal to 22. Okay? X is together on the left, constants on the right. My next, my next thing to make sure of is that the leading coefficient is a 1, because you can't complete the square until it is. Well, it is a 1, so we're good to go. So what that means I do, I go off to the side here. I take half of a negative 10, because that's my coefficient of the x. I take half of negative 10, and I square it. Negative 5 quantity squared is 25. And what I do with that 25 is I add it to both sides of this equation. So I have x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 22 plus 25. This side of the equation factors actually as x minus 5 and x minus 5. Of course, that middle term you would get by, negative, by the outer and the inner, or I call it chin and grin. Negative 5x, negative 5x is negative 10x. 22 plus 25 is 47. This actually becomes x minus 5 quantity squared is equal to 47. Now, one thing I've always, I, I taught you in class, but I'm going to repeat it. Whenever you're factoring this trinomial, the number that's going to work is always the number that was inside the parens here before you squared. Half of negative 10 was negative 5, and that was the number that worked here, and that's always how it's going to be. Okay, we now apply the square root property. If blah blah squared equals a constant, then blah blah by itself, in other words, blah blah here is x minus 5, is equal to, remember you put a plus or minus, and then you take the square root of 47. And what we need to do now is to get x alone. We're going to accomplish that by adding 5. x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 47. And that is as far as we can go, because this this 47 cannot be broken up into good and junk. There's no perfect square that comes out of that. And remember how course compass is. Sometimes they ask you to write your answer separately with a comma. If they do, one answer would be 5 plus the square root of 47. Make sure, people, you hit your space bar or move over Don't to put that comma out from under the radical and then 5 minus the square root of 47. Sometimes my students write me and they'll say, Course Compass marked me wrong because I put in the two answers separated by a comma. Well, make sure the comma is not under the radical with the 47 or it won't know what you're talking about. And we are done. That process is called completing the square.